everyone. Welcome to Physics with Noshir Alam and this is the second lecture for circular motion. Um, in the previous lecture, we had basically derived the equations for centripetal force, which were mv square over r or mr omega square. And we had derived the equations for centripetal acceleration as well. But if you remember my last comment that I made in the previous lecture was um, that centripetal force itself is nothing. However, it is a resultant force. So centripetal force itself kuch nahi hai, but it is due to some other force. Now, it could be different in different scenarios. For example, let's consider a car which is moving in a circle and here you can see it. So the car is moving in a circle and you can see, clearly see the direction it's turning left. Now, why is the car turning left? What is causing it to turn left? The answer to that is this friction force here is providing the centripetal force. So centripetal force ka aapko pata hai, direction is towards the center of the circle. We proved it yesterday in the previous lecture. Um, so what is providing the centripetal force? Because centripetal force itself is nothing. So in this case, we'll say that it's the force of friction which provides the centripetal force. Now, if you take um, A-level math, then you would have studied this formula in mechanics that the force of friction on a road is given by mu r. Um, mu is coefficient of friction and r is the normal reaction which is equal to the weight of the object. So you can even get this equation f is equals to mu w. Um, if you do not take A-level maths, it's fine. Um, in the question, they will clearly tell you what the force of friction is. Uska formula denge aapko. So if they're giving you the formula for force of friction, all you have to do now is you have to start with the statement and the statement would be that friction provides the centripetal force. Now, when friction provides the centripetal force, then you write F is equals to FC and then you write on the formula for friction, which is mu W or mu R and FC, whichever formula you wish to choose. You could use mv squared over r, or you could use mr omega squared, and you could solve the whole question. This is just one example of how you could apply the concept of central force to a given question. You know, I'm hoping that right now you have a question in your mind. And the question that I'm hoping for is, what happens if there is no friction? What happens if this particular force of friction is less? For example, there's rain on the road. Then what happens? Well, you know exactly what happens then. What happens then is that your particular car starts to skid outwards. This car does not remain in its circle. It starts skidding in the outward direction. And do you know why it would skid? Well, one obvious answer is because there's no friction or less friction. But the other solid reasoning for that is that by skidding in the outward direction, by skidding outwards, just think about it, this would be the direction of your velocity. And if this becomes the direction of your velocity, then answer my question, what would be the direction of friction? The direction of friction would still be inwards. So in an attempt to get more friction, the car decides to move outwards. Do move outwards because pani pada hua sadak pe friction nahi mil rahi. To friction gain karne ke chakkar mein gaadi kya karegi? Gaadi bahir ki taraf skit karegi. Gaadi bahir ki taraf kyu skit karegi? Because it wants to gain friction in the opposite direction. Why does it want to gain friction in this direction? Because it needs to make a circle and what will be needing for to make a circle the answer is central force is needed to make a circle so all of it all of the arguments add up that a car skids outwards because it's trying to gain friction inwards now by skidding outwards you have velocity v in the outward direction just my gaadi skid karega so, if the car is skidding outwards, then what is the direction of friction? The direction of friction would be inwards. 
And why is the direction of friction inwards? Why do you need the friction to be inwards? Because friction is going to provide the centripetal force. And why do you need the centripetal force? You need the centripetal force to make this turn. Here's another teaser for your mind. Listen to the question and think and pause the video because I want you to think of an answer and then compare it with my answer. My question is that most of you are probably in the age bracket of 16 to 18. So either you have your learner's license or you're getting a proper driver's license very soon. Um, my question is, most of you have driven, I'm assuming. Now, when you're at the wheel, you have a tissue paper box lying on the dashboard. Let's assume that you take a left turn. Think about it. You take a left turn. And if you can't think about it, sit in a car. If you don't have a license, make somebody sit with you who can drive and just observe this. When you take a left turn, depending on how fast you take the left turn, this tissue paper box starts to move exactly in the opposite direction of the turn. Think why. I hope that the answer to your query or this trick question was that the tissue paper box is also trying to make a turn in the same direction and therefore it is skidding outwards in order to get friction which is acting towards the center of the circle because eventually dabbe ko bhi to chahiye centripetal force to make that turn that was the answer and if you thought about it in the same lines well done all right guys now i want you to have a look at this video and analyze what happened and why it happened. Here we go. Truck skidded around the corner and overturned. One cyclist saw his precious bicycle converted to scrap metal, but as you'll see from these pictures, thankfully he managed to escape unhurt. So your first reaction should be that, well, there was no water. Then why did the truck skid outwards? I'll bring you back to the formula for centripetal force, centripetal force is equals to m v squared over r. So we had decided that it's friction which provides the centripetal force as you can see in this diagram that friction is writing the centripetal force. Now in this case there's no um, water so there's no concept of having less friction but what if the centripetal force that you required to make that turn was larger? Why was it larger? Because centripetal force depends on your mass. Truck ka mass zada hai. So usko centripetal force zada chahiye. Ab depend kata hai driver ki speed kya thi. Maybe the driver's speed was more. So he needed greater centripetal force. Now to get that huge amount of centripetal force. Because centripetal force is dependent on mass. Mass bhi zada hai. Ho sakta hai. Thoda sa speed mein turn karo. Speed bhi zada hai. Centripetal force aayegi kaan se. Centripetal force aayegi friction se. So friction gain karne ke liye. Where will the truck go? The truck will go outwards as you saw when he was making a turn to the left. He skidded and in skidding again there, it flipped over to the right. So that's your that's the analysis that should be in your mind. So does that mean that we should stop turning at very high speeds in Formula One races? The answer is no. We are smart, so we'll figure out a way of how to make a high speed turn and yet we don't flip over. I'm gonna show you a video now. And then we'll discuss this concept. Here we go. At most of the racetracks, you're cornering for a large percentage of the lap. That's why you could say the races are won and lost in the corners. The corners are where all your speed is gained or lost. Sometimes you see a guy going down the straightaway and you think this other car has 50 more horsepower because he drives right by him. Well, people don't understand that was all momentum from what happened back then in the corner. The guys that understand the corner the best, make the car change direction the fastest and apply the power the best, they're, they're going to be successful. So this concept that I'm going to discuss is the concept of banked turns or turning around a corner at a very high speed. And let me let me clarify. This concept is not just restricted to Formula 1. It could be restrict it could be applied to anything which involves high speed. For example, in the Olympics you might have seen this high speed cycling. It could even apply to airplanes taking off and landing because they're using high speed. So if you understand one of these examples, you can apply the conclusion to anything which is turning on a banked turn, which means an inclined plane at a very high speed. So let's understand it for this cycle velodrome in which the cyclists 
are moving at very high speed. So what happens is, here we go, have a look at this picture. Um, you have a cyclist and the cyclist's weight is acting downwards, all right? There is this plane and the plane is acting at an angle of theta degrees to the ground. And you can clearly see that all the vectors are labeled for you. So the weight is acting downwards. There's a normal reaction. Normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface. So normal reaction is this way. And because the cyclist is, is turning in this direction, the cyclist is turning in this direction. So therefore, um, the direction of centripetal force has to be this way as well. Well, so how does it make it easier? Why do the cyclists nor the cars or the planes no, not skid outwards? And the answer to that is here. Let's basically zoom in so now you can focus on the physics behind it. Here we go. So the cyclist or the car is the object over here. The object's weight is vertically downwards, as you can see, mg. This was the normal reaction, n, and this is the angle theta of that banked turn. Now what you could do is, you could move this angle theta from here to here, and it's the same angle. We can prove it in a very rigorous and quick way. So this is theta, this is 90, and this is theta, this is 90, then this angle will be 90 minus theta, yeah, theta minus 90. That doesn't matter because what matters is, have you understood the concept? So. This angle is 90 minus theta, as I showed, 90 minus theta kao ya theta minus 90 kao, we don't care. This angle over here is 90 because this is perpendicular to the surface. And we had to find this angle, and this angle, let's call it x. So x plus 90 plus 90 minus theta is equals to 180 degrees because this whole angle is 180. So you can clearly see that it's x is going to become theta degrees. So that you don't have to prove this over and over again. So in the, from now on, just remember that if you are shown an angle over here, theta, then you can easily move that angle from here to here. And uh, the real reason is, and the easier reason is that, look, if the surface is flat, then this is the normal. Right. Let's assume which is the dotted line. Just say, I'm going to take an angle theta. That dotted line will be on the screen. So right now, the value of theta, theta is zero. What is theta? Theta is the angle between the dotted line and the normal. Dotted line and the normal reaction. Do not confuse it with this angle over here. Ye angle 90 kara. I'm talking of the angle between the dotted line. Dotted line is the normal reaction. Ye bhi hai. In dono ke mein angle zero hai. Now, if you slightly turn your line horizontal, so zaire, the normal reaction will also turn. By what angle? by the same angle through which your inclined slope turns. So if this is theta, then this angle will also be theta. And if you're not convinced by this, then that's fine. You have the mathematical proof here. I've done it for you. You can easily understand what happened. So let's move on to the more important stuff. So now this angle over here is theta, and this is n. So Understand the resolution of a vector. This is vector n. n ke do components banenge. A component banega n sine theta, which is this way, and one component will be n cos of theta. You could also make n sine theta over here and say, well, this could be n sine theta. And uh, you're right, this is also n sine theta. But actually, you know what? n sine theta should be made here because object yaha pe na, wo vector hawa mein bana dete, that's fine. It's it's right. But, uh, there's no problem. But 
actually where is the force being applied the force is being applied here so i would always suggest that make the forces on the object so n sine theta is here and n cos theta is right up and here you see n cos theta and this is n sine theta now if you remember that you were making a turn this way you were making a turn this way so n sine theta over here is going to provide you the centripetal force now just imagine that n sine theta is also contributing to the, your centripetal force. Pele, when you were on a flat road, it was just friction. But now, it's not just friction. The road is also helping you make that turn. How cool is that? Now you're making a turn and the road is also helping you make that turn. That is why the cars don't skid. And we'll just take a look at it mathematically as well. So, n sine theta is equals to centripetal force and you can easily see that this object over here is neither sinking down into the ground it's not going in the direction of mg neither is it going up in the air in the direction of n cos of theta iska matlab kya iska matlab kya both of these two forces are balanced and they're equal so i can also say that n cosine of theta is equals to mg now if you have a look, let's call this equation number one and let's call this as equation number two. Let's divide one by two. And what you'll see is that the ends will get cancelled. Sine theta over cos theta is tan of theta. Central force, the formula is mv square over r and divided by mg. So m and m get cancelled. So tan of theta, oops, I forgot the theta. So tan of theta will be equal to v squared over rg. Very, very important formula. Tan of theta is equals to v squared over rg. Ye proof karne ko bhi aiva in the exam. So have a good look. And finally, we're on to the last section of circular motion, which is the vertical circle. Now, vertical circle may, let's take the example of an object which you've tied to a rope and that is spinning in a vertical circle and here we go so if you closely follow the object is mo moving in a circle at position c the weight is acting downward the tension in the rope is acting upward so mg weight is acting downward tension is acting upward you move around at this point, mg is acting this way, tension is acting this way, you move up. mg is acting downwards, the tension is also acting downwards, and you move to point D. mg is acting downwards, tension is pointing this way, and your circle is complete. Now, out of these four positions, two key positions are point C and point B. Very, very important positions. So let's consider point B first. So if my object is at point B, the question is, why is it moving in a circle? Because there must be some centripetal force acting this way. Ab yaad that throughout, this, throughout the whole episode or two episodes now, we have been saying that centripetal force itself is nothing. So what is providing centripetal force? We will say that the tension in the string plus the weight, mg, together they provide the centripetal force. Right. So tension plus mg must be equal to centripetal force and let's call this tension tension b db so this tension in the string jinko jisko t down bhi keh sakte we'll call it db so tb plus mg equal to fc because remember fc is a centripetal force so that tells you that the tension at point b in the rope would actually be mv square over r that's a formula for centripetal force minus mg all right, so let's keep this result over here for some time. Let's go to point C and let's discuss what happens here. At point C, you can act that you can see that the weight is acting downwards. Weight is acting downwards, and the tension is acting upwards. Let's call this tension T C. And what is the direction of the centripetal force? This is the direction of the centripetal force. Now, centripetal force is the resultant force. Hint, hint. If this is the resultant force, then definitely TC has to be larger than W. Resultant ka direction I'll repeat. 
اگر ریزلٹنٹ فورس اوپر کی طرف ہے ریزلٹنٹ فورس از اپورڈ دین دس فورس ہیز ٹو بی لارجر دین ڈبلو تاکہ ریزلٹنٹ کا ڈائریکشن اوپر ہی آئے اف یو سی ڈبلو از گریٹر دین ٹی سی دین دا سینٹرل فورس بی ایکٹنگ ڈاؤن ورڈ دیٹ دیٹس ناٹ ٹرو ایف سی از ایکٹنگ ورڈ سینٹر دا سرکل دس از دا ریزلٹنٹ فورس ٹی سی مسٹ بی گریٹر دین ڈبلو دیٹ اینڈ سیکنڈلی آر دے ایکٹنگ ان دا سیم ڈائریکشن اور اپوزٹ ڈائریکشن یور آنسر از اپوزٹ سو Do, do, do you add the two forces or do you subtract? Answer is subtract. Now the question is, kisko kis me se? Should it be TC minus W or should it be W minus TC? The answer to that is TC minus W is equals to FC. Try to understand because FC is the resultant force. So, jo resultant force ka direction hota hai, wohi capital F, forward force ka direction hota hai. So it's almost fo- always forward force minus friction force so therefore tc minus w is equals to fc and if you make tc the subject here the tension at point c you will get w plus fc which basically means mv squared over r plus mg compare the two forces please a taraf you found out that tb is mv squared over r minus mg dusri taraf you found out tc is equals to mv squared or over r plus mg compare the two please when you compare the two what do you see you see that there is a negative sign here and there is a positive sign here which tells you what which tells you that the tension at c whatever this number is is larger than this number so what do you say you say that the tension at point c is definitely greater than tension at point b does that make sense i hope it does because when you add two numbers you get a larger number when you subtract two numbers you get a smaller number common sense so tension at c is greater than the tension at point b So I have to ask you a question here. And my question is that this is a rope, right? You, this is a rope and you had an object and you were spinning that object. My question is, at which point would the rope break or are the chances highest of the rope breaking? I'll repeat the question. At which point A, B, C, D, you're spinning it. At which point do you think the rope has the highest chances of breakage the answer to that is point c the reason is the tension at point c is the highest so if they ever ask you to mark a point where the probability is the highest that the rope will break the answer is you will mark point c that this is the point where there are the highest chances for the rope or the glue or whatever is sticking the object with the rope the rope or the sticking thing will break great now i want you to understand another thing how do you make the circle you make the circle because in the circle there must be some minimum amount of speed with which it's spinning and that minimum speed must be needed so if you don't have that minimum speed at b you will just understand this concept i'm going to show you a video but just to get the theoretical offload here um there must be a minimum speed v at b jiske bagair ye object spin hi nahi kar payega or the rope will slack so remember this to calculate the minimum speed at point b we're ca- trying to calculate the minimum speed at the highest point To calculate the minimum speed at the highest point, you must understand that the rope should not slack. Clearly, if the rope slacks, um, then there would be no circle. So the rope should not slack. So if the rope should not slack, what does that mean? That means that the tension at point B must be greater than zero. Right? Because if the tension is not greater than zero, it's equal to zero, the rope will slack. There must be some tension so that the rope does not slack. So if you look at the expression for TB, that was mv squared over r minus mg is equal to zero, uh, is equal to TB. And now we're saying, forgive me, now we're saying that uh, this TB has to be greater than zero. So this thing has to be greater than zero. Solve it a little bit. You'll get mv squared over r greater than mg. M and M will cancel. So V squared is greater than RG. So V minimum should be greater than the square root of RG. 
Remember this fact that v greater than v v minimum should be greater than the square root of r g, where r g r is this radius of the circle and g is gravitational field strength. Interestingly, you should note that it does not depend on the mass of the object. So very interesting thing which you should definitely probe into. And finally, the big demonstration of all those concepts that you've learned in the vertical circle. Um, I want you to notice that this roller coaster tries to get up to the highest point. It doesn't. And the answer to that is why, why it doesn't? Because its speed is less than that minimum speed that you have to achieve. Minimum speed co critical speed because this is that minimum speed. The critical speed is the minimum speed which is required to make that circle. And remember that you should not slacken it. You will notice in the video that uh, the roller coaster speeds up Aram Aram Se. It reaches the top because it's getting closer to that critical speed that we're talking of. So here we go. Enjoy the concepts, enjoy the video, and enjoy the people screaming. Wait, uh, I, don't, I don't, I shouldn't say enjoy the people screaming, but anyway, here we go. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's the summary for what you learned in this particular episode. You've uh, learned about the applications of centripetal force and um, how it can be applied to a horizontal circle. And in horizontal circle, we discussed uh, the case of an object which is spinning horizontally like in a race or like a car turning and then the example of a banked turn and then we discuss the example of a vertical circle and in the vertical circle you just saw the application of it as well well there's no end to the knowledge that i could transfer but of course these videos um these lectures have to be small so um here i just tried giving you the best knowledge available in the shortest possible time and yay that brings us to the end of my first episode complete episode there are two actually mini episodes, but the topic is now complete and I want to surprise you with an ending jam. Enjoy because you deserve it and keep sharing the videos and spreading the love. Cheers.